Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Producers have spotted armyworms in Texas wheat fields and now they're heading north. Joining us now is Tom Royer, our extension entomologist. And Tom, let's just kind of start off by talking about what you've observed lately. Well, what I've, I, I got an early warning from my, my colleague, uh, Alan Knutson in Texas, saying that they were dealing with armyworms down there. And I'd start, we, we were in some uh, canola field days last week, so I started kind of watching to see if moths are flying. Noticed quite a few moths flying at night. Also noticed a lot of wheat that had been blown over and lodged. Those are the, the kind of magnets where armyworm moths like to come in and lay their eggs. And so with the early warning and everything, I thought I'd give our producers here in Oklahoma kind of an early heads up to be out looking for armyworms in their fields over the next couple weeks. And what's the best way to get out and, and check to see if they're in your field? It's really complicated. The way you go out, oh, well, there's a couple ways. Armyworms do like to feed at night, so uh, if an easy way for some people might be to take a flashlight and, and, and shine at night. And as the armyworms crawl up and feed on the, the uh, beards on the heads, uh, you can see them pretty easily. But um, I don't like to wait around at night, so a lot of times I'll just get out during the day. And uh, this is also how we can calculate a threshold, is just to get out in a field and beat the, beat the heads and separate them out like this. And just look for curled armyworms that are on the ground. Uh, Unfortunately, well, fortunately, right in here, we, uh, there aren't any, but this is, uh, we would take a, a foot square area and count the number of army worms that are in that foot of row to determine whether they needed to be treated for or not. Okay, and speaking of treatment, what are some of the options that producers have? Well, uh, one of the options they have is to, of course, to sample and look. Um, sometimes we have natural enemies and parasites that will come in and if a producer really wants to get up close and look at armyworms up close, look behind their head with some kind of a magnifying device like what I have here and look and see if they have eggs attached to them uh, to the back of their neck. If, uh, if they're, a lot of them are parasitized, they might not have to do anything. Uh, a lot of times, otherwise, it's just a question of determining whether you have enough to treat and we have plenty of uh, insecticide products that are registered for armyworm control. They're usually pretty easy to control uh, if a farmer needs to take care of them. Okay, and then the potential though of not treating, there could be some yield loss down the road? If, yeah, there would be. What happens is, is that they'll feed on the, the leaves and if a plant needs this uh, uh, green area to fill out the head, they can start getting some yield loss just because the, the seeds aren't fully filled out. Um, they often, awful, also oftentimes will, on some of the smaller heads, clip right, right behind the head itself, chew a little piece off there and cause uh, clipped heads. And so you can see a little bit of yield loss from that. Um, they typically do that more in barley than they do in wheat, but we do see some clipped heads occasionally in wheat as well. So there's two ways that you can suffer yield loss. Okay, and you've put together a fact sheet that producers yes, can reference? Yeah. got something. All they have to do is get online and look at it, and I think it should have all the information they need to make a decision. Okay, Tom, thanks a lot. Thank you. And for a link to that fact sheet, you can just go to our website, sunup.okstate.edu.